There it sits, folks, patiently waiting for me to drag it out. I've been working hard to get to this. I've been working on those doggone cars. I've got spark plugs. I'm going to pull the carburetor, make sure I get the right carb kit. And we're going to get the carburetor rebuilt in this, put new plugs in it, and see if it runs better than when I first brought it home. Let's get after it. Okay. I've got an area cleaned up on my bench to put the parts. Let's pull the cover off first. Let's take the air cleaner screws off here, just like a straight blade or a nut driver. So some of this I'm gonna do live with you folks. I've never pulled one of these off before. On a Johnson 9.9, .9, but there is a first time for everything. Hoping this will give me some exposure to something below it here. I'm just laying everything over here in order as I take it off. Looks like there's two more screws down in here. Top of the air box. Looks like that front knob slides off that way. And I'm not sure how the choke lever gets out of the way here. Oh, there we go. Some good engineering there. That slips out of the way, just like that. Looks like the choke lever there could just, that sits right there on top. Traps that. Now the lever can uh, literally just slide clear out of the out of the way. I think it will take the whole assembly out there. And Interesting little springy deal here. That is for, looks like it keeps the carburetor, keeps you from revving it up. If that was out of the way, I don't know what that does. Looks like it's just trapped in there. We're gonna pull that straight out like that. I might have to watch the video back to make sure I put that back in the right spot. No leftover pieces. Now that, Throttle knob, that air adjustment screws right here. It looks to me like two bolts and the car comes out. That bolt over here looks rather difficult to get at. Let's see if I can zoom up here. Get in a little closer for you here. Two bolts here. There's one on this side of the carbon is one down there that holds it to the to the head. It looks like it looks like they made that one a real mother to get to. Huh? 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 huh. Interesting how fuel fuel lines actually held down with a zip tie. I'm not sure that's factory. But it looks like I might be able to get this little thing off. And if that's off, I can get to that bolt. And that looks like it's hard to get to because it's a straight blade screwdriver, but 
Can I break it loose? Is the question. Okay, there's a tricky little piece to get out of the way. This little guy here. Hope you can see it here. A little straight blade screw was hard, hard to get at. Can't get a straight shot at it. And it's a little shoulder screw. So it's it's tough to get at. I might see about straight. See if I can find me a socket head cap screw, shoulder screw type screw to go back in there so I can get a little shortened wrench and get in there and get that tightened. Well, I'm going to cut the zip tie now off the fuel line. Um, I always win, so. So, resistance is futile. Okay, just about got the fuel line knocked off here. Fuel line is now free. See if I can get this other car bolt. I think I can lift the car right on out. I hope. Okay. That's why I keep a little, some low grade, lower grade wrenches around. You can see I sanded this one down to give me some more clearance. Now I have me a specialty carb tool with a Johnson 9.9. Yeah, once I got that, because I'll need that to tighten it up effectively. All right. One custom boat tool. Yeah, it looks like it's all free once I get these. That's free. I'll put a magnet on this one if I can. Oh man, it's stainless. It won't magnetize. I'm hoping I can find them when I drop them. All right. There's the mighty carb. It's out. It's free. Let me see if I can fish out those nuts. There's one. Let me get my needle nose after those. Do not need that going down the shift shaft hole. That would be bad. And it just went down the shift shaft to old son of a biscuit eater. Told you it was going to be bad. Okay. Well, folks, I must apologize. I completely lost the footage of taking the carburetor apart. And I'm not willing to put it back together just for showmanship. But we're going to pull out the soaking carb. Now this carb wasn't in bad shape. It was actually really pretty clean. What this will do for it is it'll take and get rid of any other uh, type of, uh, any gunk that may have been built up in there at all. It'll be completely cleaned out. I'll blow air through every orifice in here so that it will be clean and clear. But I will show you, how hopefully I can, don't screw the footage up and put it back together and I'll show you putting it back together. Now, I did take a picture of this, the pieces, and I'll show you, I'll display that. And I showed the picture, so this is why I say it's important to take a picture when you go shopping online to look at stuff, because you can see all the pieces. If you do a search for your 9.9 .9 Johnson, it comes up with several carb kits, several different generations of it. This will hone it in when you see the shapes of these gaskets and how they got them laid out there in the, in the, uh, a little rubber gasket here that will lock it in as that yep yeah, that's your kit so and i did get a kit ordered for this and i also ordered a new water pump i don't know when the last time the water pump was changed so i risk it seemed like it was pumping okay now here in the old man cave sink this stuff's water soluble the cleaner I use, so I rinse this clean with water. 
and I'll get the water warmed up here. It's too warm and I can't keep my hands in it. I get this pre wrap so I can really put the, put the coals through her here and get her flushed out. cleans it off. Look at that thing. It's clean. It looks like brand new. Now I'll wait for my gasket to get the kit to come in and we'll put it back together. You see that choke lever that all it does is just go whoop. Pulls that thing shut when you pull it out. Choke off. Choke on. Off on. Alright. Back to the shop. Now what I have for my compressor here is an air gun, a blow gun that has a rubber tip on it. And that's handy for placing into these orifices. Or if I, how do we pronounce a portal of that? And you can make sure you get air blown through every little piece of it. That way you know there's nothing and I'll blow it dry. I realize this is very loud. Now the carburetor is clean and dry. So what I'm gonna do is store it over here with the rest of my carburetor parts until my kit arrives. And what I like to do is I'm just gonna wrap this in some paper towel. The last thing you wanna have is a little bug crawl inside there, which can happen. And you just spent all this time cleaning it, making sure it was free of any debris inside. And a little bug crawls in there, blocks up one of your orifices, and you don't know why it doesn't run very good. And that could be it. So, until the kit comes in, which should be next Wednesday, uh, stay tuned. Okay, folks, we're back a couple days later. I've got my carb kit here. I'm going to tear it open for the first time. We're going to compare some parts. I like to do that first. So we got a nice clean spot here in the bench. I know it doesn't look clean, but it is clean. Uh, see if we can get this bad boy open. Come on. We'll take all the parts out and compare them to our old parts. To make sure we have the right everything I need. There's a new float bowl pin. Need a little rubber gasket for the air mixture screw now these kits come with sometimes extra parts that you may not need to use uh, generally there you go that's it generally you'll see on the carburetor as you can see here I've kept it wrapped up and clean some of these plugs here that you see in the carb I don't normally knock those out uh, as a habit here's another one here you'll see a couple of these they actually come with the kit i won't be reusing those if you do have to knock them out at least they're there so here's my old float or my new float here here's my old float looks like a match and then we've got a new float needle seat and float needle Right there, and this is a really small piece. I don't know if you can see that. Don't lose that little guy. That's what holds your float needle to your float. So it practically disappears when I set it on this bench. 
But it looks like I have all the pieces to put it back together. You can see how the old assembly goes together here. That little metal piece keeps the float hanging there and lets it float. But also, when the float moves up or goes lower in the carburetor, it pulls this needle away from the seat and lets gas in. So, let's get started putting it back together. Looks like the first thing I want to do is these you want to make sure you use a big enough screwdriver. I've got a big one here that spans the gap but doesn't fit. This one, we'll have to get a different screwdriver. There's a little, little plastic washer that comes in your kit. You want to make sure you put it underneath that. Otherwise, your, your uh, seat will go a little deeper than it needs to. Next thing I'm going to do is assemble the float assembly. So you can copy the other one here. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if we can get that in the picture. So you can see that this little clippy. You can put the new seat right on here. Should snap right in like that. And these have a rubber tip on them, so be careful with them. And then we're going to take the new seat, just pop it right in here. And it just kind of just hangs, all it does is slide right on here. There's nothing fancy there. And you got to put it on the right side, which helps. But and then this guy will go right in here. You gotta make sure the seat is in the, the seat fits right down in here. Oops. And then you're gonna take your new little pin. And it shouldn't be forced anywhere. Everything should just slide right through. You see there, just to get everything lined up. The head of the pin, I don't know if you can see it on this picture. Let's see if I can get it done here. The head of this pin is a little bit bigger than the diameter of the shaft. So it stops right there. But it should go all the way flush. So what I'll do is I'll take my, something with a little leverage here. See if I can push it in flush. Poop, it pops right in. Now typically people will say you gotta set the float and everything. Typically when I've looked at if the bowl, if the float is horizontal, pretty much horizontal or parallel, I'm sorry, parallel with this surface here to here, this setting is pretty good because then what, what happens is when this is in use, as you use the bowl, the fuel out of the bowl, this will drop down and let more fuel in. When you when you shut it off, it fills up, shuts the fuel off so you don't flood your engine. So like I said, this is a very simple carb kit. All we got left is two gaskets here and a couple other pieces. Go ahead and be careful opening the packages. If you use a knife, don't cut your gasket. Don't fold or break your gasket while you're trying to break open your package. This is a nice little rubber gasket here. Goes right there. Looks like it fits good. Put the cover on it. And then we have four screws. Okay, and the last screw I've got here, I haven't tightened any of these down yet. The last screw I've got actually had the uh, carburetor information on it. Shows the make and model of the carburetor. I always like to preserve those. I'll put that right back on here. All 
All right, now I can use my specially ground wrench. I can only get about an eighth of a turn maybe. But when it comes to this, and that piece of foil I just put down there was handy because if I was to drop that nut again, it wasn't going to go all the way down into the shift chamber. The shift shaft chamber. Now I get this tight. And I'm just about home free except for one specialty tool I've got to make. It might even be proved to be more challenging to get on than this nut that I'm working on right now. So you can't use the box in because it doesn't fit. I get this one good and tight. I got the new gasket in there. All right. Good and tight there. Now I feel pretty confident I can pull that back out. This little dude's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I got to get that little button booger there back in there. This goes back in and screws in back here hooked to it, which I would call no man's land. So let me get it started. Okay, folks, before I finish putting the carburetor together, I'm going to show you a tech tip trick. What I've got here is an old stable container. I just emptied it out. I just did my pre-mix um, of my two stroke oil. What I use here, I like to use Amsoil. It's synthetic outboard two stroke oil. It shows the mixture on the back to for the 50 to 1, 80 to 1, or 100 to 1 mixture, whichever way you want to go with it. So I, obviously for this motor, I'm doing 50 to 1, but measuring it out, they've got this nice little uh, measurement deal here. And they show, you know, for a 50 to 1 to use 2.6 ounces. Well, what is 2.6 ounces? Well, on this container, let me pop some of the stuff on it here. The nice part about it, is this old, I'm using an old storage, stable storage container, has one ounce, three quarter, half, and quarter ounce, which helps me make be a more make my uh, measurements more precision. Pre ugh, precision. So take your Amsoil. Whoops, I'm spilling a little bit here and there. And if you use the big container, as it never fails, you might be trolling all day with your kicker motor you realize, man, I sure would love to have some more gas. I don't have any more pre-mix made up. Well, well, this is easy enough to carry in the boat. And you can go ahead and mix it up. So, you know, 2.6 ounces. You put the good old lid back on here. And we'll squeeze up. Precision. One ounce, just like that. Dump it in. Another one ounce. Dump it in. And if you want to go a little rich, go a half ounce instead of two point, well, 2.6. There's uh, 16 ounces in a quart. So then you want two, 2.6 ounces, which is just a hair over 2.5. So you can go, here's a half ounce. You can go in, in, between, in here between uh, half and three quarter, and that'll probably get you close enough. It might be just a tad bit on the rich side, but that tad bit, it's never going to hurt you. Being too short of oil is a bigger problem than having too much oil. So that makes it easy for you to measure out what you need in your, if you, especially if you can only get a place that you got a gallon or two gallons, or if you're doing a, a bunch of it, you can just do this. It also has, you can dump it straight off the side or straight out this spigot if you want, because it has the same 32 ounce markings on the side. So you can use, whoops, get centered up here. You can use this both ways, either by the container or by this which this has it on the side of the container, but this can make it more precision for you. Anyway, that's what I like to do. So that's my tech tip of the day for pre-mixing gas. And this is easy to carry, easy to sit in my gunnel. And I'll, I used half of it to mix up my, I guess, uh, six gallons I already did already. So this is ready to go in the boat. And I'll take it along with me once I get the kicker motor installed. 
thank you. This is, I'm not sponsored by Amsoil or Stable, but I do recommend Stable in all your gases because you never know when it might sit for a couple months or a half a year. And you want to know that when you go to start that motor up again, that it is fresh. And I use Amsoil just because, of my, my opinion only, it's the best oil on the market. I used to run it my motorcycle, and I run it and everything else I can uh, afford to run it in. It's not cheap, but it is good stuff. Now back to the carburetor build. Okay, folks, I can't stress enough how much how important it is to make sure you take a picture of how things go together. So when you put it back together, take it apart, you can put it back together the same way it came apart. Here, I'm trying to do it backwards here. So this was on the outside pointing up like that. That's the way it's got to go in. Which means I had this on there when I took this off. Oh, I wish I would've put this on before I put the carburetor back on. Cause now I don't have any room to do it. Which can be bad. Okay, got that back in there where it belongs. Now I gotta slip this piece back on. Which goes like this. Holding on to the screw so it doesn't fall. This is pointing, that's hard to see. This is pointing straight up in, in the assembled area. Now I gotta get it. Uh... Okay, folks, specialty tool number one. I haven't tried it yet. Let's see what I did here. Let's see if we get it here. I got a pair of channel locks that I ground a circle in. Now these are vice grip. Uh, not channel locks, I'm sorry, vice grips, that I can actually close around that screw. The nice thing about this is when it's closed, I can maintain and hold the opening to whatever I want here, like that, by turning this screw down here. What this is gonna allow me to do is hold that screw with enough sticking out that I can get it started. And then I can back this off so I still have room to spin it. So now I'm easy, able to easily get this into place. Okay, we got that back in, hooked up where it's supposed to be hooked up, looks good. Got a few more pieces here to plug in. This can go in now. This is your idle air mixer screw. Actually, it don't go in now. I've got to put this box back in. My mistake. We'll go ahead now and slide the choke lever back in and pop it back into place. It snaps in on the front here. Like that, so that's that there. I don't know if you see it. Oops, went too far. So that's open when it's pushed all the way in, choke when it's pulled out. And it pulls out, it'll catch on a stop. Okay, this is one piece here that needs to go on. 
it goes in between here this is your choke stop it gets held down with the air breather box screws so when this pulls forward it can't pull out any further than that it stops there we'll get that in place looks like we're ready to go on with our breather box we'll see if we can get that in position here before you put the air breather box back on and snap this little thing there's a groove right underneath this gear that this thing slips right into this keeps it trapped once that's in place then the box is going put this back in because it feeds through the air box lines up in there it's gonna give it a little push and turn it'll bite into that rubber and go right on in so the rubber keeps it from moving freely but it... now what I've done here is I've bottomed it out I'm gonna back it off With the bottom down I'm gonna back it off about a full turn here and we can mess around with it from there we want to get it started then the nice thing about this little knob is it pops out and pops onto the drive on the end so you can get it in position wherever you want once you find the sweet spot that's where you'll leave it and you might find yourself opening it up or closing it to start it but then you'll move it right back into position when you're done so we're going to leave it right there and see if i can wear myself out trying to start it One last thing I want to do before I start it is I want to put brand new fresh plugs in it. Haven't done that yet. And what I'm going to put in here are some NGK BZ7HS10. That was the recommended plug in the book for doing a lot of low idling to mid range speed for long periods of time, which is what I'm going to be doing with this motor since it's going to be a kicker motor. You don't typically run them wide open, so this will, that should make it run better. And what I've got here is the plugs are gapped at the proper gap. Fresh in decays. Let's fire it up. Okay, guys, I'm probably going to work on a sweat here. Range here. Well, I fired up quick.
That's a pretty quiet running beast right there. <laughs>